Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What is the significance of the Fars verse, the Sunnah prayers, other than the obvious difference where one is required and the other is optional? Well, this is the thing. You're looking at it as something that is obligation and something that is optional. But for those who love the Prophet, والسلام, and they're claiming that they love the Prophet, والسلام, there is no such thing as obligation and optional. It is not an option anymore. When you fall in love, nothing is optional. Everything becomes a farce. Everything becomes an obligation, isn't it? Yes, it must be. Because Holy Prophet والسلام, those ones who are close to him, those ones whom he loves, are those ones, whatever that he does, they do it too. And they don't see it as something that is farce and something that is optional. They do it because they love him and they're doing it to imitate him. And they're doing it because they get the blessings of that love, of the imitation. They don't see it as something that is optional. If I do it, okay. If I don't do it, it's still okay. They do it because they say, this is a sign of my love for the Holy Prophet. This is a sign of my love for Allah. And I need it. It is not uh, complete if I don't do it. And really, if you sit down and you think about it logically, what is stopping us from making the Sunnah prayers, the uh, or the Nafila prayers? The we just finished the Isha prayers. We prayed according to the Hanafi Mazhab four Sunnah before the Fars prayers, and after that we prayed two rakats or four rakats and three. The Sunnah of the Witr. So, I've seen people that they come to Masjids or they come here, Muslims. They will sit there while we pray the Sunnah. They're not going to pray. They're sitting, they're looking around. Then, getting up to pray fast, they pray. Then after that, they just sit while we finish the Sunnah. Now, what is, I'm thinking, what do you gain by not joining in with us doing the sunnah prayers. What is it that you gain? Angel coming down to open up a table for you? Somebody coming to give you money? It doesn't make sense. What is it? Two, three, four, five minutes of your time going up and down. You are suffering, you are hurting, you are in pain when you do that? No. But what is in pain? The ego, definitely. The ego hates that. The ego says, nah, I don't want to do it. That is a time where you have to catch your ego. That is a time when you catch your ego and you go against your ego, the blessings will come more to those ones. They refuse to. So it doesn't make sense. Only the ego is standing there in front. So, yeah, the uh, Sunnat prayers, and not just the Sunnat prayers now, now from the Sunnat prayers that we do, we're going to take other kinds of things, other things that we're going to do, that is also a sunnah. That is also what, meaning what the Prophet did. What he did, or what he said, or what he approved of what others did. Yeah? For example, so much talk about the Mawlid, Mawlid being bid'at, it was never celebrated during the time of the Prophet, they say never celebrated during the time of uh, idiots. Hassan ibn Sabit, the Prophet's, Poet was there reciting poetry about the birth, his own birth, isn't it? You don't know Islam, you don't know history, you don't know nothing. He was there and he was reciting. Prophet والسلام, he's not free like you and me to have birthday celebrations. That is enough, meaning that one, his, his sahabi, his companion, praising him. One time it is enough. In 1400 years, we have always celebrated the Mawlid. But it's only in this century that people have lost their faith. Yes. And they begin to question everything, thinking these questions have never been asked. And because they've hidden the books, or they've destroyed the books, or they've hidden the people, or destroyed the people that have this knowledge, those ones who ask the questions 
think, you see, they cannot come up with an answer. So we are right. But if we give them the answer too, they're deaf and they're dumb and they're blind and they cannot see. So what can we do? It's okay, it's a free world. It's free until Sahib Zaman comes. <laughs> so, yes, that is a sunnah. Now, from that sunnah of the prayers, it will creep into other things in your life. Now you start to say, well, what about this I'm going to add in my life? What about if I were to sit how the Prophet is sitting? That is also a sunnah. What about if I'm going to lie down the way the Prophet is lying down? What about I'm going to eat the way that the Prophet is eating? What about I'm going to do all these things that the Prophet is doing? Then slowly you are imitating the lifestyle of the Prophet. And when you imitate the lifestyle of the Prophet, Allah will love you. Allah will love you. That time, you're not going to see it as something that is optional. It is something that is an obligation. For the one who loves, it becomes an obligation. Stuff the Allah Azim wa Tubilay. Evet. Başka?